I will present this talk on behalf of Dr. Werner and uh, the Würzburg team because Dr. Werner is tra just transferring to Johns Hopkins and he couldn't attend the meeting. So also you will have to bear with, with me uh, this afternoon the second time with a talk on dosimetry. The first talk will just be on more or less on imaging. So what we did is gallium pentixophor in neuroendocrine tumors and what was the motivation for that? We know that we have various treatment options for uh, uh, neuroendocrine tumors, and we've seen this slide before, and I've seen, we've seen the update before. Didn't take a picture and just replaced it. But we see that the NETA-1 study shows a really good um, difference between patients uh, treating conventionally and treating with uh, looted hair. But what happens to the patients with initial grade 3 st uh, stadium and the differentiated neuroendocrine tumor? Because they are predominantly uh, SSTR uh, receptor negative. Here I just show you one example. So that's, you've seen probably this also in your daily practice. You have a patient here with a prog progressive bone lesion after four cycles of PRT, Dota Tate. Uh, and you still see that in the Dota Tate scan, you have uptake in the lesion. And so that means that the treatment was not as effective <coughs> or, uh, as it could have been or as should be. Also, we can talk in this aspect, of course, about personalized treatment, but this was done with standard activities. Also, there's a nice paper showing that the SSTR receptor expression and CXCR4 expression in tissue samples in uh, gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors show different behavior. So the number of receptors goes down with the grading, uh, with increasing grading, sorry, and uh, the number of CXCR4 expression in tissue samples increases. So we know that CXCR4, chemokine uh, receptor 4, is overexpressed on cell surface of various tumor entities, and it's a key factor for tumor growth and metastasization in several tumor types. And uh, in our department, we have some experience with gallium uh, 68 pentixer 4 uh, for in vivo imaging of CXCR4, and it has been used in a lot of uh, human malignancies, and it's, uh, it is expressed in those entities. And what we wanted to do and see is identify patients that could be used for CXCR4-directed treatment uh, and receptor radiopeptide therapy in conjunction. We, had, we did some treatments already in the case of multiple myeloma, both with yttrium and lutetium. Here you see on the left-hand slide, you see the gallium 68 pentixophore scan of this patient. And on the right-hand side, you see the same patient uh, after treatment, after the first cycle of treatment, and you can uh, see that the lesion, lesions also show up with pentixotera. here. I also want to uh, remind you that pentixotera and pentixotera are slightly different chemical um, entities, but the biokinetics are quite similar. So the question was, can we evaluate the CXC4 expression with Pentix of 4 PET-CT and compare it with gallium dota toc and FDG in neuroendocrine tumors? And what is the difference? What can we learn about that? So in this study, 12 patients were included, two females, uh, the rest are males, mean age 68, uh, mostly gapnet tumors. And here you can see the demographics of the patients. Uh, we had some patients with grade 1, grade two and three, so it was a mix of patients. Most of the patients with the exception of one had metastases, either in the liver or lymph node, some in the lung and peritoneum, and Karnofsky index also varied between two and uh, 90. <coughs> and for the methods, what we did is we did three PET scans, gallium dota toc, furine FDG, and gallium 68 pentix 4 within a medium of eight days. The range was uh, between two and 64 days. And we did a binary image analysis, meaning either positive <coughs> or negative lesion, and on a lesion-based visual analysis, uh, plus SUV max and SUV mean for the primary tumor, the hottest metastatic lymph node, and the organ lesion. And in addition, uh, there was some immunohistochemistry, the evaluation of CXCR4, SSTR2A, and SSTR5 expression biopsy samples at the time of the initial diagnosis. So here come, show you some of the results. Of the 12 patients, 11 were positive in the gallium dototox scan, 10 in the FDG scan, and 6 in the gallium 68 pentixer 4 scan. 
we break down and compare directly uh, Dotatoc with Pentexa 4, we see that six patients showed more lesions in the Dotatoc scan. Six patients, uh, four, sorry, four patients showed more lesions in the Pentexa 4 scan, and one showed uh, both lesions, the same lesions in both scans. Uh, comparison to FDG shows that we had seven positive FDG patients and three gallium appendix of four patients. In the following, I show two examples of patient studies here. It's a patient with a FDG positive lesion here. You can see it here as well. Uh, with a KI of 67, uh, a KI 67 of 90%, sorry, and grade three. But this patient, this was the Dotatoc negative patient here. You can see that there's no uptake shown here of the dotatoc in this lesion. And in the Pentex 4 scan, you could see again this lesion here, taking up actively the Pentex 4. And in addition, we could discover a lymph node metastasis here in this region that couldn't be seen in the FDG and uh, in the dotatoc scan. Another uh, example shows the concordance of immunohistochemistry and PET imaging. Again, we have a patient here with the three uh, arrows you can see here, the lesion here. See it's on the PET CT also, that's patient number three. Also a grade three patient. And on the right hand side you see the corresponding immunohistochemistry for the uh, for the three different traces for FTG, Dotatoc, and Pentix4. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 so what we can show is that uh, the Pentex 4 positivity correlates with grading. That means here for the grade one we had only uh, one positive patient and it increases with increasing um, grading of the patient. Also, of course, the FTG goes up, but we wanted to use Pentex 4 as a potential treatment option with Pentex here and see if the patients might be eligible for this kind of treatment. Of course, there are some drawbacks to this study. We had a limited statistical power Due to, because we had only 12 patients. In some cases, the biopsies were obtained uh, on a long-term period compared to the PET imaging, meaning uh, there was a long time delay. And of course, that's we've seen in, in the patients also with multiple myeloma that the CXCF4 expression is a dynamic process which can be influenced and, and also changes over time. But on the other hand, a CXCF form seems to play a limited role in detecting well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors, which is to be expected. It might serve as a non-invasive biomarker for tumor grading in the entire body, as I've shown you before. We saw some lesions that weren't discovered either with FTG PET or with Dotatoc. And also, as we have some experience already with endoradiotherapy with CXCF4, it could possibly open a new treatment option in advanced de-differentiated tumors which are SSGR negative. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Questions? Um, <clears throat> are you, is the mass uh, injected um, established? In other words, uh, we heard some discussion about um, some differences in biodistribution with somatostatin uh, targeting, receptor targeting. I mean, is, is your mass is established here? You mean, you mean you for, the do, for the Dota Uh Well, no, actually, uh, for uh, the Pentix 4. For the Pentix 4, that's standardized at the moment, yes. That's one kit that we uh, use, and it's uh, used with a cassette system. So we always have the same peptide mass. When you showed one image of the therapy version, the lutetium 177 labeled, uh, there was a lot of liver uptake. Is that something that's in the changed? Six, in the six CF4, you mean? There was uh, the, the example I showed. Yes, the, there's liver uptake, but the liver doses are not critical. Okay. Yeah, uh, critical is the absorbed dose to the bone marrow, actually, okay. in those patients. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>